Hello everybody, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a few different ways to sidechain, specifically your kick and base. Okay, so we're just starting with a kick that I've made and put in a sampler, and a base that I've made and put in a sampler, uh, just for the ease of this video. And for the MIDI we've just got three identical notes, all with full velocity. Okay, so Firstly, let's take a look at the sort of traditional way to do this. Let's go into audio effects, compressor, and really this should work with any compressor, as long as it has a sidechain input, which it probably does. Okay, so let's go in here, turn on sidechain, go to the input, and go to our kick. Okay, so now the signal from the kick is feeding the compressor, but any gain reduction that happens as a result of the kick will happen to the bass. Okay, so to get this working, we're going to want to pull the threshold down and let's have a listen. If I bring an oscilloscope onto the screen, just so you can kind of see what's going on. As you can see, we are affecting not just this first bass note, but also the other bass notes. So it's important when you're using the compressor method of doing this, that really you go by ear, to be honest, and just find the attack and release settings that you find most pleasing. It doesn't need to be perfectly only affecting the first note or whatever, it just needs to sound good to you. Okay, so, Top tip though, for those of you who are using the Ableton compressor, turn on the EQ, leave it on high pass, or band pass if you want, and just set it up high so that it is listening out just for the initial click of the kick. So it's going to set the compression off based on the beginning of the kick only, not the entire length of the kick setting the compressor off. Okay, if you do do that, you will need to turn the release up a bit. But yeah, you can have a play around and find the settings that you think sound best to you. Personally, this is not a technique that I use. Okay, so next up, we have pretty common slash popular way of doing this type of thing, which is using plugins such as LFO Tool. LFO Tool is pretty well suited for this job, especially as it allows us to have these nice curved sections of volume modulation. So, particularly, I find for the lighter styles it can give a really nice kind of pumping effect like this we can also change this snap down to four and then we can shift click to step through these so you could maybe step it. But for me, what makes LFU Tool cool for this type of job is these curved modulations that kind of give the nice pumping feeling. Top tip for those of you using LFU Tool, use the note retriggering. So click here and click again until it says envelope. So you click it twice from the gray, so one, two, and then now we can send the MIDI of the kick drum to LFO tool so that it only sets off this modulation when the kick happens. So it means that if you're gonna have the kick in the bass do something that isn't perfectly four on the floor, it's not gonna get all messed up. It's still gonna stop the kick and the bass from clashing. Okay, so to get this working, we need to go over to our kick drum, Make sure it's grouped, create new chain, 
on the new chain, go instruments, external instrument. Okay, and then go for the output, set it to base, and then make sure it's going to LFO tool. Okay, now when the kick happens, we should have this modulation in LFO tool happen. So now that means that we can have LFO tool at the end of a long line of plugins and stuff, and we don't have to worry about latency and the phase not been here at all anymore because it's only listening out for the MIDI from the kick. Okay, just to illustrate this, if I get rid of the kick though, we hear nothing because uh, it's going to rest at zero and it needs the kick to make this modulation happen. Okay, so moving on. My personal favorite way to do this uh, side chaining job is to just make sure that in your synth or sampler of choice that you have velocity attached to the volume of the plugin. Uh, and then go into the MIDI and just set the first note to the lowest possible amount of velocity, uh, as long as it's not zero, just make sure it's one, because um, zero would play nothing. Anyways, uh, and then make these next two notes full velocity. And now, if you see my other videos, you'll know I like to use this velocity device, so I can now control the groove with this out low knob. Okay, cool. So next up, we have slightly more complex way of dealing with this. Okay, so some people, what they like to do is create a whole separate channel just for the first bass note so that they can affect that first bass note separately. And it can be very effective, but I'm just going to show you a neater way of doing this. Okay, so. What we're going to do for the moment, let's just get rid of that velocity device. And what we want to do is group our either synth or sampler that we're using for the bass and just group the synth or sampler though. Any processing needs to be left external to this group. Okay, so then put a velocity device on it and then duplicate the chain. So we should have two identical chains, okay? So now, what you want to do on, let's say, the top chain, leave the range at 127, but the, set the low end of the range to 126, okay? And then on the other chain, let's set the range 125 and the low end at zero. So now, this first chain will only allow MIDI notes through that are at full velocity, okay? And this other chain will let in notes of any other velocity, but just not the highest level of velocity. Okay, so let's just pop over to our MIDI. We've already got our first note set at the lowest amount of velocity. So now we can pop back. And I forgot to mention, but we need to set both of these velocity devices to gate mode as well. Okay, so now let's give it a go and just check that it's working. Okay, it's definitely working. Something I like to do now is just open up the macros and map the out low of this second chain to macro one so that I can control the groove from this macro here. Okay, so now once you've decided on the sort of groove that you like, don't worry about uh, the clash in terms of the lows. If there is any, just don't worry about that right now. Just set the, the groove that you like. Okay, and then on this uh, first bass note chain, we can grab an EQ.
and chop out the sub. So now we are going to considerably lessen the amount of clash going on between the low end of the kick and the low end of the bass. I still recommend trying to get the kick and the bass to be harmonious. Uh, this isn't actually a technique that I really use. Very rarely will I use it, but sometimes it can be really effective. Just a note, if you're going to do this, then you want to use the zero latency mode, uh, unless you're in a half decent door that can deal with latency. Uh, but yeah, if you're in Ableton, you're going to want to leave it at zero latency, because if we went into linear phase, you know, it'll keep the waveform intact, but the problem is that we're going to have latency just on one part of our baseline. Okay, so you can have a play around with that and see what you think. Alternatively, if we're using a synthesizer rather than a sampler, we can just pretend this serum here is the first bass note. We can just go into the FFT editor and just remove the fundamental. And that would be much cleaner, really. Um, but it's really up to you how you go about doing this. Okay, and then once you're happy with all of that stuff, you can go ahead and do your processing outside of this group. Okay, and it'll affect both the first note and those other notes. Okay, so continuing, let's set the, the velocity of the first note up full again. So we've got the machine gun kicking bass. And let's say we like the way that the end of the kick and that first bass note are gelling together in terms of the low end, but the first bass note sort of sounds as though it has too much presence, but you, you don't want to get rid of that bass happening there, it's just too present. So what we can do to remedy that would be take something like Serum FX, or LFO tool, but I'm going to use Serum FX just because we've already looked at LFO tool. And we're going to do the same thing again, where we go on the kick, and we get the external instrument, and set the output to the bass, and then make sure that it's going to Serum FX. For some reason, Serum FX has a lot of different ports. I haven't really uh, delved into this, but uh, I always just set it to one, and that works. It probably works on all of them. Uh, but anyways, so going back to the bass, we want to get the filter, and now the sort of strength of the filter is really up to you. Let's just set it to a 12 dB one, and set the cutoff all the way down. And then let's make an LFO with envelope mode, one quarter length, and let's make this kind of shape. And we can imagine the kick happens here, for this long, and then we've got the first bass note, and then the next two bass notes. So we don't want any filtering to happen to these ones, but we want to filter this first one a bit. Okay, so let's put this LFO on the cutoff, and let's see what we get. So just so we can see what it looks like before we do this, I'm just gonna turn the filter off and play it for a second. Okay, so let's imagine that we like the bass that's happening, the, the actual low end that's happening in that first bass note, but we want to make it a bit less present. We turn this on. Again, this is a technique I sort of rarely use. I almost exclusively use the just the velocity technique. But this can be quite nice sometimes to make that first bass note less present, but keep the low end happening there. Okay, so that's just about it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to support me, come join the Discord channel, check out my Patreon, or check out my Gumroad. All this stuff is linked in the description. So otherwise. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.